Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. So today, I'm going to be giving you a brief introduction into Godot 4. So this is for complete beginners, um, people who have never touched this game engine, or really any game engine before. Um, you shouldn't need to anyway. Um, and yeah, we're gonna show you all the basics of it. We're not gonna do any coding or anything, but I will be talking about the scripts tab encoding a bit. So yeah, let's get straight into it. So right here you will see Godot Engine Project Manager. This is what happens when you first launch it. You have a few options. I'd recommend just doing new project. And then you can uh, go through the project path. You can choose a renderer. You can read through all these. I'd recommend using mobile in basically every case. For some 3D games, Forward Plus will work better. You can also get... Um, so they're, they're kind of like demos or examples, and you can get all these, you know, if you want to know how to save and load with Jaden, Jason, you can go and download this. But once you get into a project, you'll be greeted with a screen similar to this, if not exactly the same. It might change in the future, it might not. You'll see you have three tabs, or four tabs up here, 2D, 3D, script, and asset lib. Most likely, depending on if you're making a 2D or 3D game, you're going to be working in these two the most. And script. Script you'll be using for scripting, obviously. And uh, asset lib. Give you like uh, some cool tools like uh, control camera 3D and go dot joystick. And uh, I know there's a uh, the dialogue one, but I don't think uh, it's updated to 4.0 yet, but um, yeah. There's not going to be as many as there usually is just because of um, just because of how new 4.0 is, so they might not all be compatible. But um, yeah. So uh, let's go into the file system next. So this is exactly what you'd expect. It's a file system. You can create folders. You can open it in File Explorer. And if you open it in File Explorer, you can obviously create a file, so like, you know, it's sure, a Microsoft Excel worksheet, <laughs> I meant to click the text document, but this works too. Let's just make it a, uh, a go.json. Then if we go back in here, go.json. So, um, you have icon.svg to start. It's very simple. Um, you can use it as like a placeholder and, and everything. Now, uh, let's see. Create root node. So this is the node system. It's a little intimidating to start, but, um, but it's very simple to understand once you get used to it. So let's just start with a 2D scene. This will create a node 2D. So basically every object in your world is a node. So if you want to make a sprite display on the screen, that'd be a sprite 2D. If you want to make a like a character for like a platformer, that'd be a character body 2D. Um, if you like to uh, make I don't know like a color rect, uh, that would be a color rect. You know, it just allows you to make like a rectangle of color, and you can mess around with like the theme and everything. And generally, nodes are very easy to understand. I think just using the engine will make you get a better grasp of it. I'm also going to be doing a platformer tutorial series not too far after this one goes out. So you will get a better understanding of nodes through there. And of course, you can do the same thing with uh, Node 3D if you're making a 3D game. We've also got multiplayer stuff. And yeah, that's the simplest overview of uh, the node system that I can give. Now you saw it over here, the inspector. You can change different properties of objects, so stuff like uh, like our sprite. If we add that back, we can change a bunch of things like animation, transform, so we can make it like at 100 of the X position. We can use the tools up here resize it and you can see that changes the properties on the inspector. So 
So you hardly ever use uh, these three tools. Personally, this is enough for me, just the default select tool. You can do this to lock only to select the parent. So if it has a child of like a collision shape or something, then um, then it, you won't be able to select that collision shape unless you click over here. And obviously you can also do stuff with the collision shape. We can go into node, and we can do signals. So these are basically ways of connecting things. So if you have like a button, let's say, and we can check if the button is pressed, and you can link that to like any script in your uh, scene. But we haven't got the scripts yet, so let's hold off on that for a bit. All right, import. This is some pretty simple import settings. You can check through these if you want. I don't personally use it. So let's get into scripts, actually. Now, we're not going to go into, like, how to code or anything. We're just going to go into the basics. So you can do press this while selecting any node, including the root node. But you could also do it on, like, our sprite. You could attach a script. And then you can change the language. I do believe if you get the mono version of the engine, you can get, um, you can get C sharp as well. Um, you can make a few different built-in options. So we're going to choose node default. And let's just go ahead and create. Now something awesome that Go has over other engines is that scripting is built in. And with that, they're allowed to do stuff like, um, like if we reference our sprite, or I guess since this is a script on our sprite, we do visible dot. And then we do like equal to true. We can hold control or command on Mac. We can click onto this. And in the editor, we can get an explanation of this. So visible, if true, this canvas item is drawn. So we can read up on the documentation. We can go ahead and save that script. We can go ahead and save the scene. And uh, yeah. So obviously that won't really do anything because the sprite doesn't have a texture. But obviously if we give it a texture and we don't make it visible by, by default, you can see it'll go ahead and do that because there was code for it. And yes, that is about the basics of Godot. Obviously, there are a lot of other things to learn, and I do have a, a tutorial series on platformers coming out, and I might do some other tutorial series after that. There are also um, great other learning sources, but um, going up for is new. It's going to take a while for everyone to get up to date with their tutorials, and uh, yeah. Bye, guys!